Good evening. So my name is Saulus, and I'm worker of uh, Vilnius University Malete Observatory. So I don't speak English very often, so please accept my Lithuanian English. Uh, Sa Saul Saulius, yes? Yes. I don't speak English very often too. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I hope we will, uh, we will understand it at each other. <laughs> I have learned English. <laughs> I have learned English today. Okay, so uh, I prepare to introduce you some uh, themes about the roots of observation, about the needs which uh, push us to look to the sky, to raise our heads. And it will be a little bit uh, theoretical and uh, only at the end it will be some practical information about Lithuania. So let's, let's start. When we are alone under the night sky, imagine that we are very ancient people and we want to understand what it is the world around us. So we start to observe and we find that there is horizon around us and there is a sky dome above us. And we have in Lithuania some uh, riddle. What is the middle of the earth or land? The answer is, here where you are standing so the center of the universe is here where i am standing and when i am in the center of the universe when i am interested in all these surroundings i start to divide or recognize the world so the first two parts were sky and earth and all this world is environed or surrounded by mountains, by forests, by waters. So by these main uh, materials, which are very important in our everyday life. So in this world, which was understandable by this person, there was living some human, which is a man or a woman, which start to observe the universe the sky and the phenomena on the sky. And when he collects all these knowledges, he recognizes that the world, which is for him, is above the earth, below the sky, and uh, on, side, on this side of horizon. So he recognizes this world as this. This is my world, I'm living here, I'm alive, I know every plant, every phenomenon every tree and animal but outside these boundaries there is other world and this is Saulius? World... Yes? Saulius? i can yes. hear so i can hear somebody else's voice in your room as well okay mm -hmm. yes we understand too much around yeah <laughs> Okay, so the main uh, the main luminarity on the sky was uh, the sun, and uh, the first one, which was very important for ancestors, was the sun, which was moving on the sky. And uh, people used to to see the path of the sun during the year, and they separated the four main directions related to the moving of the sun, the positions of the sun. And these directions show the appear the east, west, south, north, and it helped people to orientate in the landscape. Of course, the sun in various cultures were the main uh, heavenly body, which was uh, in the role of God. But usually people started to use the sun, the light of the sun for everyday life needs so they started to measure time using the shadow of the pole and they started to create some sundials and of course they noticed that uh, moving of the sun on the horizon line is very important for year fest festivals uh, celebrations dates so for example there is a big horn stone circles in, in usa and canada and how does this system systems work? 
if you see the sun, sun sunset or sunrise position on, on the horizon line, you may fix these positions with the help of some things or stones, wooden poles, pyramids, or some places on the horizon. During here, you see the sun moving along the horizon line, but there is a day when the sun stops, and we call it uh, winter solstice. Next half year, sun is moving in opposite direction, and we speak about the summer solstice. In Lithuanian language, we call these two moments with the words, which means the moving back, not the stop, but moment when the sun changes its moving direction. So different languages shows us different aspects. One is aspect of uh, sun is stopping and not moving along the horizon line. And other thing is when we speak about the changing of direction. So you know, of course, in your country, you have some megalithic uh, monuments, uh, maybe related to astronomical investigations, uh, observations. But in, in, in Great Britain, there are a lot of thousands of, of stone circles. But in Lithuania, we have some models uh, which uh, shows the similar places where people used to observe the movement of the sun. And what else they can see on the sky? They can see, we call it a rainbow, usually in our days. But uh, earlier, our ancestors used to say that there is a cane of viva, bow, bow of viva, <laughs> or uh, bow of lome. Uh, these names, viva and lome, belongs to some Lithuanian goddesses. <coughs> and there is one uh, in in uh, southern part of Lithuania. They used to name this uh, phenomenon as a sneezer. Uh, how to how to say it? When you uh, when you want to, to to drink the remnants of your drink in the, the high glass, you use some straw, and and you can hear some sound. So people used to think that this phenomena helps to take water from uh, wet fields back to the sky. Other phenomena is, of course, uh, lightnings, and uh, they were understand, understood as an arrows of Perkunas. Perkunas is the name of thunder god in Lithuania. <coughs> and of course, people wanted to know some uh, evidences of uh, existence existence of the, uh, this god. So they find some strange stones and they it, it was enough for them to understand that the god exists, of course, because we can find the arrows of Perkunas. You can find uh, parts of bodies of uh, these uh, beings, mythological beings, uh, which are divided into pieces. It is devil, it is uh, Caucasus, it is uh, Lome. So the, some parts of of these uh, of goddesses. When they found this, they say, "Okay, we believe that th these are activities of our gods." On the sky, you can also see clouds which have very, very, a lot of uh, forms which you can understand as the birds, as the angels, and so on. And uh, in Lithuania, under our sky, we have a group of people which has named sky tracers. You can find if you want, and they are crazy about these uh, phenomena on the sky, about clouds, about rainbows. And they can go by car four or 300 kilometers hunting some interesting cloud of, 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 of thunder. Other phenomenon very important to us is uh, eclipse of the sun. And we can see the eclipse partial, partial or uh, total eclipse. And these are very rare phenomena, but in a lifetime, we usually see one. So it makes to us a huge impact for our emotional uh, life. Speaking about sky, 
it must be said that Lithuanians <coughs> thought that stars are related with souls of that family member. When you what evening looked at the sky, you can see appearing the stars. And this is moment when you can to make a contact with your dead children or dead uh, parents or other uh, family members. So when you are under the dark sky, when you are in the darkness, you have possibility to meet your close uh, <clears throat> ancestors or family members' uh, souls, which appears and manifests through the darkness and shadows. So the dark sky was their place. And this is the picture of Algis Klishayotis painter, which, uh, which has name universe. And on this universe, he showed these figures as ancestors. And of course, in this sky, some stars fall. It is, it is also related with the death. And in, in Lithuania, people used to uh, think that when the man dies, the god send the star to show the way the, uh, uh, for the soul of that person. So if you see the uh, shooting star moving up, it means that soul goes to the heaven. And when you see this meteor going down, it means that the soul of this person goes to the hell. And sometimes it's very rare to, to see the meteor moving parallel to horizon line. It happens, but it's not very often. So this phenomenon, as we explain it, according to the system or mythological system of understanding of the world of these people, <clears throat> place which all these meteors start as named ra radiant. And it's very interesting in Latvian, our neighbor country, in Latvian folklore, they say they, they have a song, and this song has uh, uh, that words uh, Sun and God were arguing half a day, half a night. And after that, God through magically through the silver stone to the sun so it means that uh silver stone it means that a shooting star so in latvian language there are a lot of uh, this uh, ancient uh, information about observation of the sky uh, why we have no a lot of such knowledges because we had had no the uh, uh, written culture. All information was only by the by the words from mouth to ears. Other object on the sky there is comet, and this is a last summer comet which was observed everywhere in our hemisphere. And when we speak about comets, this is not only about the Thanian culture. You maybe know the battle at Hastings, and uh, before these Hastings, uh, people saw on the sky the Halle Comet, and it was accepted as a bad sign for King Harold. Some people used to think that Comet brings us some uh, disasters, disasters. Uh, but there was uh, some who thought that it was a very good sign on the sky. And you know this from the Christianity. Uh, in Latvian culture, we have investigator Jan Kvietnik, which uh, had an idea, which uh, was born uh, reading and listening Latvian folk songs. We see that some, some text says that sun uh, th throw to moon uh, silver twig. And sun was uh, throwing to the moon of uh, some kind of uh, gray or white stone. And he, Janus Lietnik, thought that it may be was related with some astronomical phenomena. And they made calculations and saw that it was 240 years before Christ. On the 7th of May, the situation which is shown on the picture. 
On 16 of May, the moon was not far from the tail of Halley Comet, but on the 17th of May, the moon was directly on the tail of the comet. And this comet was a kind of twig, kind of sword. And people may saw, may see this, uh, this phenomenon in the sky and it made them a huge impact, which uh, was lasting 2000 years in the folk culture in the form of songs and some believing. So this sky phenomena has its reflection on our culture. And maybe you know, of course you know, the uh, some field of history of astronomy, which is called archaeoastronomy and ethnoastronomy. Yeah, the moon is the next one, which has a huge impact on our culture. It changes its phases. <coughs> and we, we used to, to, to speak in Lithuania that moon has no four phases. Moon usually had six. So the first moon phase is so-called empty moon, when we cannot, may not see the moon. There are three days when there is no moon on the sky. After that, we see the young moon. It lasts about six days. After that, we see so-called before full moon and after that also three days of full moon so we may compare the full moon and this uh, empty moon these two phases have three days and all when we go further we see the waning moon and the end of the waning so we have clear uh, expressed six phases of the moon <laughs> okay, and people used to think that when you see the new moon, the first time in new year, you may guess which which uh, which year, which success of the year will be. When you see the moon standing, it means that people will stand, will be alive and healthy, and you will have more good weather. But when the first moon on, of the new year is lying or laying, lying, lying uh, it means that we will have some illnesses and the weather will not be good. So our crop also will be lying as uh, people used, uh, will do. When the moon moves to the, through the sky, we also see the Milky Way. And in various places of Lithuania, people used to think that moon, when it becomes full, has collected a lot of souls of dead people. And when it is on the moon, it... Pour out. Pour out or empty it itself. Or empty. And uh, all these uh, souls of dead people goes up or down the same as a, with a shooting star. Uh, Milky Way, it's in English, but in Lithuania we call the name the path of birds. And in very ancient uh, time, it has named Path of Souls also. In Oceania, they used to say that this is a backbone of sky. It's a reason why the sky does not fall down. And this idea is expressed also in uh, different countries. For example, some people think that there is an uh, animal, deer, on the sky. And this deer is made from three uh, constellations, Auriga, Perseus, and Cassiope. And this big deer, this is head and horns of, of uh, deer, has on its back the pole. And this pole holds the sky. We may compare this uh, Sami people, Sarva, dear uh, position on the sky with our western uh, constellations so greeks also have this idea about holding of the sky dome the strong man atlas and in the country we have a culture we have this idea expressed in the form of a tree and we call it the world tree a strong tree which 
has various reflections, various expression forms in our art, in our paintings, and even in our uh, summer festivals and details of summer festival. These poles also have uh, the same meaning. And we have some uh, religious things, poles, related to some uh, religious aspects, and also it represents this uh, the world tree. And usually at the top of this uh, wooden pole is the cross, but uh, sometimes, especially in uh, very old items, items we see uh, so-called uh, small suns with three main parts, part of stars, part of sun, and part of moon. <clears throat> and when we speak about the spatial model of the world, not only the vertical, we see these so-called gardens, and they are made from straw. It's a volume model of our world. And usually inside these uh, systems, there are situated some uh, uh, apples, some uh, figures of men, figures of animals, and very rich, full of various things which are very important for people. And usually they use this straw space uh, when the wedding festival is. So it is a gift for the newborn family. Is um, some symbolical wishes to have a rich life. As rich is this straw space, they wish to, uh, this new, new family to be rich as this rich uh, straw space. Okay, so we remember this uh, scheme about the understanding of the uh, of the space, and we may ask: uh, Is it possible to to go from our space to this another world? Of course, in fairy tales we can find things. Uh, we have some fairy tales which uh, says that. People planted bean, and this bean grows up to the sky, and they had possibility to go to the sky. So, how this idea expresses in our days that way? And the structure of, of this uh, idea is the, the same from our world go to somewhere up. And of course, boundaries of our understanding uh, of our world, which we understand now, it's much further than, uh, than the uh, borders, boundaries of uh, ancient people. So, about these boundaries, when I understand myself, recognize myself as a person, I can say that it is my world, my wo wo world, my understanding, my boundaries. But of course, when I am in some company, we may expand our boundaries. So we may speak about the boundaries of room, boundaries of uh, house, uh, homestead, village, region, uh, for example, then England, <laughs> Scotland, Wales, state, continent, and of course, planet. And it is not funny because we now are on the <clears throat> very edge of a new space time when we are speaking about possibility to go to Mars. So the Earth as a planet will be a uh, different, uh, separate world comparing to the Mars after a few decades. And what is the edge of the world today when we understand it now? So the first model of the world was a flat Earth with a very clear expressed boundaries. But now, with our spaceships, we can go from the Earth far to the space, and we may see the Earth smaller and smaller, and there is moon in the field of view of the space people. And, of course, we had very interesting experience on the moon. And we, it was uh, possible to observe sky, to observe uh, Earth in the sky, and to feel some strange feelings, feelings of the alien place. And astronauts, they bring, they brought the, the flag of their states. This is not only for the honor of, of my state, this is also for the better, uh, better feeling, 
him standing on the moon. So with a flag, he creates some his own space, which is related with the earth. And this is very important idea, which we may see everywhere when people use uses flags. This photo was made in Siberia, in Russia. In Lithuanian history, we have very dark period when the Soviet, when the Russians came to Lithuania, and they started to exile. exile people to Siberia from Lithuanian territory. And after decades, the grand uh, grandchildren of the people which were dead in this Siberia, they went to Siberia to see the graves of their uh, grandparents. And they fixed the flag with the Lithuanian symbol and it means their own space, the space where they can feel stronger. It's very, very similar to that idea about the flag of the moon, on the moon. And of course, if we have our flag, we will feel stronger if we will be everywhere in, 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 in various situations. And of course, the separate page, separate story must may be about the flags in the war when uh, some military forces have their own flags, but I will not speak about that. The idea will be the same. And move further, and we see the Earth and the Moon from very, very far away. And especially far away is the view of the Earth from the Saturn. What is the Earth? One of these pale dots is Earth with all our 7 billion people, with all our religions, with all our... Happiness and worries. And worries, happiness, and all things which are in our planet. And which is address of our planet? Of course, we are rotating around the sun, but sun is rotating around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. And where we are with the, our sun in our, in our Milky Way galaxy, somewhere not in the center. <coughs> so we are not very special as a star. We are not very special as a planet. And as, as astronomers, we know that there are a lot of planets in the space. But we cannot prove now, are these planets with a life or no? It depends on the time. And these galaxies forms clusters of galaxies and clusters forms super cluster. So this is our model of universe in our day in the beginning of the 21st century. And we may compare it with a flat earth model, which was a few thousand years ago. So these models shows a evolution of our understanding of the structure of the universe and how we did find or out all the, that knowledge. Of course, when we observe the sky and we may observe the sky in emotional way and we may observe the sky in scientific way. So observatories were the places where people used to get the scientific knowledge. And Vilnius University has its own observatory in 1753. And when you will be in Lithuania, you will go to this, I hope you will go to this uh, to excursion to this observatory, and we will try to organize you this event. Uh, founder of observatory, Thomas Brauskas, for the, and later director Martinas Pachobotas, all, uh, both of them were well known in uh, that time uh, Europe. And Martinos Pochobotas was a member of the Royal Astronomical Society, Society of, uh, of Brittany. The first devices of this observatory. And later, in 1928, Polish astronomers, astronomers which were... Uh, the owners. owners of that time observatory in the Vilnius uh, city, they moved this observatory out from the city to the some rural place. And not very long, because in 1969, they decided to, to, to move 
uh, our Los Angeles astronomers decided to move this observatory out from from uh, from Vilnius too. But before that, when Poland occupied Vilnius uh, yeah. region, astronomers and university moved from Vilnius to Kaunas, second city of Lithuania, and they found a new observatory. We see the Tower of Observatory. But now this observatory is not survived, but survived idea about astronomy. Uh, this is place of that observatory on the map, but not very far. About one kilometer from that place, there is a place of houses and streets has name of stars, planets, comets, Pleiades, and space. So this is some light uh, remaining, remembering of, of this astronomical event in Kaunas. And now we may answer the question uh, where astronomers moved from Vilnius to found new, the third one observatory in Lithuania. This is a map of light pollution in Lithuania, and of course we must find some dark place. This is, uh, this looks very good. And this is Geometi, a western part of Lithuania, which uh, some kind of very good hills, not very high as yours, <laughs> but, uh, but pretty high to, to have good horizon. But observatory was situated in the eastern part of Lithuania, and it was because of the economical reasons. It's not far from Vilnius, but in pretty dark place of Molete region. So this is our observatory with three towers of telescopes. That was place in 1969, where the first tower was built. And now we have this, on that place the biggest telescope in the North Europe with a diameter of one meter 65 centimeters. The house of the first telescope with a diameter of 25 centimeters, you see this telescope. And later they have built uh, the second tower with a telescope of 63 centimeters. This is the dome of this telescope. This dome was brought in Lithuania from Latvia, from Valdona Observatory. And this was the main place of observation, few decades, and not only observation. Here you can see the meeting of a uh, hmm, society of astronomy lovers. <laughs> In the, on the ground, there are standing astronomers, and on the balcony, there are young people, students, and uh, pupils from, from secondary school, which gather together. And they made these gatherings uh, every four or five years. This is telescope of that uh, dome, 63 centimeters. And the third one telescope, instead of the first one telescope, now we have 51 centimeter telescope in the place of the first wooden house. And this is the biggest telescope in Lithuania used for the professional needs. And uh, this telescope always use some devices and we do not use this telescope for naked eye observation. Usually we had used the photometers, but now we have modern devices, spectrographs and use these photometers pretty rare. Uh, what we do in this observatory, we are looking for the new asteroid. It's a main program of our observatory, parallel with the spectra, Scopic, uh, spectrographical investigation of, of, of stars. And we may take, uh, so take, okay. so take name, name the ah. name after. We may name these asteroids with the, with the names and we use some <clears throat> names of, uh, of cities, Vilnius, Kaunas, or uh, River, Nevunas, or some interesting and very important events in Lithuanian life, the Žalgiris or Grunwald uh, battle. And uh, this is a strange name, Litva. In Lithuania, we say Lietuva. In English, it is Lithuania. In Russian, it is Litva. So why we have the name of our state in, in Russian? Because it was in the Soviet time when Lithuania was under the rulings, under the rules of, uh, of Soviet Union. So they didn't let us to have the real name of Lithuania, Lietuva, and they said, okay, you want to have the name of your republic, but it will be in Russian language. 
So, so we have Litva, but we have no Lietuva on, on the sky now. <coughs> and this our observatory belongs to the <coughs> Institute of Theoretical Physics and Astronomy <coughs> in Vilnius. And this uh, institute also owns the planetarium in Vilnius. So there are two important places related to astronomy, one for investigation, another one for the educational work. And of course, in our observatory, we have excursions, thousands of people, especially young from schools, which goes to our observatory every day and uh, during all the year. And this is a man, Vito Tostregis, and why I'm showing him here, because it is one of co-founders of this observatory. And he was born in Utena, the town which is in relation with you in this uh, program, Argonavis. <laughs> the professor Stregis, uh, in the lecture with the visitors of observatory, and in our observatory, we do these events uh, every year, several times. Every spring, we have so-called starry nights for the amateur astronomers. And every autumn, uh, the last Friday of uh, September, as in all Europe, we have European researchers night. During these events, we have a lot of telescopes, not only our telescopes in, 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 in observatory, which we show for our visitors, but people used to bring their own telescopes to our territory. And we have 10, 8, sometimes 12 telescopes in, in one field and visitors, about four or five, sometimes six or 700 people may see these telescopes, may choose one which is more interesting for him. And very often after such events, uh, they decide to buy the telescope. And very often they call to observatory to, to ask, please help us to choose which is better. So this is one moment from the observation of that starry night. And this is very interesting event, which we have uh, uh, during which we have guests from Latvia and Latvia uh, have very interesting truck. This truck is a space truck with a telescope. So uh, this is mobile observatory. They used to go through all the territory of Latvia to different places, show people the sky. But uh, pity, but this uh, this truck now is not in Latvia. They decided to to go to Canarian Islands because these islands has more tourists and more people, which can get get money for the founders of this observatory. <clears throat> In our observatory in Lithuania, also we have some courses for students of astrophysics. And uh, every three or every four years in uh, Lithuania, Vilnius University and Molieta Observatory, we have these courses for about two weeks with the lectures from all the world and the students from all the Europe. And this is strange thing, but also related with astronomy. Sometimes people call us, for example, in this case, they called before the wedding ceremony, asked us help to know the figure of uh, constellations, Taurus and uh, Libra, the, the scale. And they ask us, what is the color of stars? Because we want to use some uh, gems some uh, mm, precious stones, and they wanted to, to have very good They wanted the stones on the ring represent the, the right color of the right star on the sky. So they made these uh, first in Lithuania uh, uh, wedding rings with the astronomical uh, constellation and I think that it will be very popular <laughs> next year and of course in Lithuania there are a lot of uh, private observatories I will not show you every but I will show only a few examples this is house in Kaunas uh, professor of Kaunas University built his own observatory even with a separate column for the telescope this is in the western part of Lithuania 
about uh, four years, one man in the village make uh, was building this uh, this observator also with a separate column for the telescope and this is very special place this is the third observatory of one man Andrei Kaselevich who has built three observatories in his own yard he has made about uh, 15 mirrors and about eight or nine telescopes and this is his observatory and his observatory is for the astrophotography but uh, it's not far from Vilnius, and you can, you can see the Vilnius uh, light pollution on, on the sky. But now, as I know, the people has built uh, about 10 observatories all around Lithuania. And the, uh, very often, there are very young people, about 20 or 25 years. When they were pupils, when they were students at school, they were interested in astronomy. And we are very happy that our observatory in Lithuania helped them to meet together in the form of astronomical camps, in the form of astronomical uh, Olympiads, and they started to be interested in astronomy. And now, now we have the layer of society which are not astronomers but which are very deep fell in love in, in in astronomy so the in very near our observatory we have very special place museum of ethno cosmology it means that it's not only place for observation you see there are two towers with the telescopes 40 centimeters and 80 centimeters they use these telescopes for showing night sky and objects for visitors. But here on the ground is an exhibition place, exhibition a hall. And the main idea of this museum is to show different relations between the man and space. Of course, science, astrophysics is one window to the universe. Astrology, uh, UFO problems, uh, problems of uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence, uh, art as a poetry, painting, music, uh, also astronautics is the directions of, of development of this uh, museum exposition. And maybe you know that uh, for astronauts, civilian astronauts were in the in the space a few few days ago. They inside the spaceship had a Lithuanian flag, and this flag after the returning to the Earth will be situated in this museum. So when you will go to Lithuania, maybe you, you, you will go here and we will show you this, uh, these things. And that's, that's all. And thank you for your attention. Maybe you have some questions. Hello, well, everybody. Uh -huh. Over there in, in Lithuania, it's, it's been wonderful to hear your presentation. Congratulations. Thank you. It, uh, even though it, it seems as if you're in the middle, in the middle of an eclipse there. Ah, some light. <laughs> you, you look as if you're in the dark slightly, but I, I really have enjoyed what you've presented. And one day I would like to come to Lithuania and uh, discover and experience your dark skies. At, at the moment, I'm looking at the light pollution map for Lithuania and very keen to visit some of your dark, dark skies locations. And it was interesting to see the, uh, to, to hear your story about the rings and that there are businesses who are creating uh, produce which are inspired by the stars and the constellations and that might have given me an idea of something we can do in wales mm -hmm. I'd thank like you to very much i'd like to second thank you. i thought the talk was fascinating yeah and, um, really, really really nice yeah one of the best of the day i'd say, I'd say really enjoyed it Dėkuoju, kaip supratau, kad jums patiko ir 
So, but thank you, and I hope you you will be in Lithuania, and we will meet you. I, I, I am. I would I would love to come to Lithuania to see those skies. I, yeah, I was particularly definitely. taken by the uh, the story of the Path of Souls because it's very similar to Celtic mythology. Mm -hmm. So I hope that I think that every old nation which was born under the sky and the possibility of surviving were related with a very good knowledge of the heavenly bodies and their cycles. So I hope that you can find these things in every old culture. Hmm. Agreed. Saulius, Saulius, yes. I, in my notes here, it says that you like folk singing. Yes. Would you like to sing a small bit of, of, a, of a folk song for us? Uh, of course. <laughs> Of course, but this song will be related with the astronomy also. Okay, after three. One, two, three. Dayan Maru Anamelinu Daisala Listulapavu Dai sola listo lo pavuju, dai an dveju triju stolepjal. And this is song about the sun, which is on the sea, and the verb verb means that sun was observing using the poles. We don't know exactly what does it mean, but this is words of that song. It's fabulous. And, uh, yeah, very good. Uh, Saulius, next next year you win the Eurovision Song Contest. Douze, points, douze points. <laughs> goes to Lithuania from Wales. Yes. From from the from the Wales jury, you get 12 points. 12 <laughs> points. Thank you. We um, are the winners. Because we are the, the winners of your We are. We are. Oh, that was fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much again. And um, I'd love to come to Lithuania at some point to uh, to meet up with you in person. We will wait. Thank you very much from everybody in Wales. I can speak on behalf of the of the Welsh nation. Some people call me the real Prince of Wales. So you are more than <laughs> you are more than welcome to come to Wales and we will look after you. Come to the Cambria Mountains. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care then, guys. Thanks very much then. Ta.